So what do we do? We get together, we make the lawat of the Holy Quran, we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we collectively make dua in the divine court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala convey and send the thawab of the gathering upon the arwah and the souls of all our marhum. Amen. And from the very beginning, it is proven that the amal and the actions of the alive benefit the deceased from the very beginning. And that is why it is mentioned in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are various du'as in the Holy Quran, and it is very important, alhamdulillah, in madrasa we also teach our children these du'as that are proven from the Holy Quran. For example, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana. This is a dua that is mentioned in the Holy Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are some other duas as well. Rabbana dhalamna anfusana wa illam taqillana wa tarhamna wa nalkunanna min al khasri. So these are duas that are proven from the Holy Quran. And it is very important. In fact, Sufiya Ikram, Awliya Ikram, our pious predecessors, Salihin, the pious servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the great scholars of Islam have mentioned that when, whenever we make dua, you know, there is actually a, a method of making dua. There is a method, there is a sequence, there is a tartib of making, making dua. You don't just pick up your hand and just make dua. There is a method, like how we make wuzu, there is a method of making wuzu. How we make ghusl, there is a method of making ghusl. How we offer salah, there is a method of offering salah. Likewise, when we are making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sometimes we take these things very lightly and very, we underestimate it, these things. But it is very, very important that we should know the proper method of making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we are supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we are making dua in the divine court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is very important that we know the proper method of making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best example is Suratul Fatiha. Suratul Fatiha, everyone knows Suratul Fatiha. The best example. Suratul Fatiha means the opening chapter. Suratul, Suratul Fatiha. <coughs> the opening chapter. The first chapter of the Holy Quran. And Alhamdulillah, we all know Suratul Fatiha of Ba'at. But Suratul Fatiha, Ulama Ikram and the scholars of Tafsir have mentioned, the commentators of the Holy Quran, that Suratul Fatiha has close to 20 names. The famous name is Suratul Fatiha. But it has close to how many names? 20, 20 names. And one name is Suratul Dua. Suratul Dua, the chapter of supplication. Suratul Fatiha is also known as Suratul Dua. Suratul Fatiha also has a name called Suratul Shifa. Suratul Shifa, and this is mentioned in the Hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That if you want Shifa, then what you do, make tilawat of Suratul Fatiha seven times. Make tilawat of Suratul Fatiha seven times and make them blow on the person, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him shifa. Suratul Shifa. So Suratul Dua. Why is Suratul Fatiha also known as Suratul Dua? Why? Because there is a verse in Suratul Fatiha. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. O Allah, guide us to the straight path. And now that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us to the straight path, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instilled the nur of iman in our hearts, and the kalma is on our tongues, la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah, we make dua, and ulama ikram have translated this meaning for people of iman, for muslim, for believers, the translation would be, ihdina surat al mustaqim O oh Allah, you have guided us to the straight path. The nur of Iman is in our heart. The kalma is on our tongue. Now keep us firm on Salat al-Mustaqim. Akhri saas tak, till our last breath. Akhri saas tak. 
that when the soul is leaving the body at that time, the kalma should be on our tongues. Keep us firm on Sirat al-Mustaqim. So yeah, Idina Sirat al-Mustaqim is the dua part. But that is not the first verse of Surah Al-Fatiha. What is the first verse of Surah Al-Fatiha, my respected brothers and sisters? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Again, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. What is the meaning? Hai, subhanallah. Ahmad ba Allah salamat rakya. Amen. Alhamdulillah. What do you glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. After that, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. The most beneficent, the most merciful. You mentioned the attribute, the sifa, the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is mentioned in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when a servant of Allah, Banda, Abdullah, servant of Allah, Ibadur Rahman, the servant of Rahman, when they glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when they make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when they mention the divine attributes and the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts their du'as and it pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that is why the, the chapter, the surah, surah al-fatih starts with the glorification of Allah Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Malik Yawmid Deen then you submit yourself, Ham kya hai, we are nothing Allahu Akbar. We are? We are nothing. Iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in. You all alone we worship and you all alone we ask for for madad, for help. Our creator, our maker, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thereafter the dua part comes. Iyidina salat al-mustaqim. So ulama kam have mentioned in the light of Surah Al-Fatiha and in the light of the Holy Quran, that whenever we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let us pick up our hands, glorify Him. Glorify Him, say subhanallah. Say subhanallah. Glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mention His attributes, His divine qualities. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. That's what we do when we make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thereafter you make what? Dua. That is why, alhamdulillah, in any mafil, in any gathering, we commence by the name and by the dhikr, by the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thereafter, alhamdulillah, we praise the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the most beloved creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the greatest creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our aqa, our master, we are his ummatis. He is our leader, he is our imam, we are his followers. Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And this is what our kalma teaches us. What our kalma teaches La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Five times on a daily basis in the masjid when the muazzin is giving adhan, after mentioning the divine name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does he mention? The risalat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The shahadat of the risalat and the prophethood of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is part of our deen, this is, the, this is part of Islam, this is part of our religion, that after the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we praise the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And at the end of the mafil, what do we do? We make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we hope from the infinite mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept all our duas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept all our ameens. At this very moment, my respected brothers and sisters, as I mentioned, do not, do not take this lightly. Do not underestimate your presence in this Mephile Park. Right now, at this very moment, you are under the merciful showers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are in the gardens of Jannah. You are in the gardens of Jannah, paradise. Allahu Akbar. This is mentioned the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addressed the Sahaba Ikram and said, I'm actually preparing you for the mafil so that inshallah we have that atmosphere. You know? And inshallah I'm going to also present a few ashar of Hamd and a few ashar of Nati Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah I'll also say a few words on Isali Sawab and on Hukukul Walidain, the rights of parents, inshallah.
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us the tawfiq and hidayah to make amal Amen. and just to prepare you for the mafil. Alhamdulillah, at this very moment, we are seated under the merciful showers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addressed the sahaba ikram and says, O my companions, إِذَا مَرَرْتُمْ بِرِيَادِ الْجَنَّةِ إِذَا مَرَرْتُمْ بِرِيَادِ الْجَنَّةِ فَرْتَعُ O my companions, when you pass through the gardens of paradise, then indulge in them freely. O my companions, O my ashab, O my sahaba, when you pass through the gardens of paradise, jannat, jannat ke baghat, gardens of paradise, indulge in them freely. So the sahaba ikram asked, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa ma hiya riyadul jannat. Abhi to am dunya mein, we are in dunya, where can we find these gardens of paradise in dunya? Because the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Oh my sahaba, when you pass through the gardens of Jannah, indulge in them freely. So the sahaba ikram asked, Ya Rasulullah, where can we find these gardens of Jannah and paradise? The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Hilaqud dhikr, the gatherings of dhikrullah and the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wherever people get together and glorify and make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those are gardens of Jannah. Those are gardens of paradise. And why wouldn't our du'as, Ashraf Bhai? I'm saying this to comfort your heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will comfort your heart. His rahmat will comfort your heart and the hearts of the family members. Allahu Akbar. Why wouldn't our du'as be accepted in the divine court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we are seated in the gardens of paradise? We have this hope in the rahmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that inshallah our du'as will be accepted. Amen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant marhuma jannatul firdaus. Amen. You see this term marhuma, what is the meaning of marhuma? Anyone? Marhuma, nay. You see, with, alhamdulillah, it is used when a person passes for a deceased. Marhuma, female. Marhum, male. But what does it mean literally? The word itself is du'ay maghfirat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the Holy Quran. I mentioned Rabbana Atina fi dunya. These are du'as that I mentioned the Holy Quran. And it is very important that we learn these du'as. And Ulama Ikram have mentioned that whenever we make like individual du'a also, then before